Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're Po on the Car. I'm so excited to be here. My name is Chris Rivers. And I'm Mandy Mack. <laughs> yes. And we are here today with episode oh, 39, I believe, on Pole Tips for Pole Dancers. Yay! We're almost done with season one. This has <laughs> been a beautiful journey, but we'll get into that in our next episode. Let's continue on with Pole Tips for Pole Dancers. Yes. So. <laughs> we've, we've been talking about this episode for quite a while and we've been compiling <laughs> lists not just from us but from also from viewers like you <laughs> mm -hmm. who have contributed mm -hmm. some pretty fun pull tips so, yes. so this might be a two-part episode <laughs> yes i'm sure like after we say all of these pull tips we'll spur some ideas in you and you'll let us know your pull tips so we can include them in our next episode Yes, awesome. And make sure you stay tuned for our last episode where we'll be recapping this whole season and giving you sneak peeks for next season. So excited. <laughs> yes. So anywho, let's get into these poll tips. I guess my first poll tip, and these are all random tips. There's no rhyme or reason. <laughs> my <laughs> first poll tip is when you're doing a poll trick or a poll combo, Take your time and breathe. Oftentimes we rush through it, um, which causes a lot of issues with our proper body mechanics and it causes the trick to kind of not work out. And it really does show a difference when you just breathe, take a moment, think of what you're going next and go into your next pose. And it's such an important tip. I like it. If you tell your students that, if you see them rushing, just tell them, breathe. And it really does make a difference. It's crazy. Yes, I love that pull tip. I think it's probably the most important pull tip. Because <laughs> <laughs> we all rush. Like, even uh, if we've been doing it for years, we still like, oh, my God, I want to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you can totally tell when a dancer is breathing and when they're not, because they look really stiff and rigid. But once you add the breath, your whole body starts to move with it and I like to remind myself that, you know, the breathing comes from my diaphragm, which is right next to my abdominals and all of the, the spinal mm -hmm. movements and everything. So if you breathe through it, sometimes it helps you even move better. And I think too, wow. students are afraid to breathe loudly, right? Because it's <laughs> weird. But I think knowing that it's okay to audibly breathe is important. So I think yeah. the other day when I was rehearsing, Chris, you were like, did you hear Mandy breathing? That's how you should be breathing. Yes. <laughs> and I was like. <laughs> oh, it's too funny. It is true. It really does work. It really does help. All right. Do you want to go into the next tip? Yes. I guess um, a tip that I always like to remind myself and students is to have fun. Um, when you go into pole class, sometimes we get into our heads, we try to get the pole trick, we get all frustrated, we feel like a failure, but if we remember that we're here to have fun, <laughs> um, which should always be the goal, then all of the other stuff can go away, we can get the trick whenever it's available to us, you know, like wow. stress of our lives might be preventing us from now, or like something else, like it might be a slippery pole day. But as long as you have fun and you find some fun in your class, because we're always in charge of our own happiness. And if you expect the teacher to create the fun for you, it might not happen. You might have to find that fun for yourself. Wow. <laughs> there goes the puppies. Anywho, I love that tip. Have fun. <laughs> so our next tip um which was given to us on facebook mm, there's quite a few from this person to make sure to clean your pole before and after the class which i love this tip it's so important you always want to make sure you clean your pole so it's ready for you before use and clean it after so it's ready for the next person and you know being courteous and all that um do you have any thoughts on that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess um, a, a, a pull tip that could come off of that is if you can't clean off your pole, you know, for whatever reason, tell the other person that you didn't get to clean it. Don't just let them go onto the pole all dirty. Um, 
I guess just communicating um, in the classroom too is a good good poll tip. And yeah, because sometimes you can't get get like the top of the pole clean, and it's just because you can't climb up there. And just letting someone know that you didn't get it up there that would be cool, <laughs> rather than being yeah. like, whatever, I'm just gonna leave, and the pole's dirty. Yeah. You have to deal with it. <laughs> And if you don't clean it, your instructor has to go up there and yeah. do it. <laughs> That's the thing, too. <laughs> right? Like, there's been so many days where I've had to stay after and clean all four poles. It's good conditioning, but yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and our next tip. Our next tip is remember to not apply oil-based lotion to your skin at least 24 hours before class everyone's skin is different so this time period of oil-based lotion might be increased or decreased for you but in general I guess using a non-oil-based lotion would be best and there's also like um I think pole physics is what it's called that lotion for pole dancers is out now that's supposed to be really good um to keep your skin moisturized when you're pole dancing but yeah no lotion it will ruin your whole class. <laughs> it, it can, yes. <laughs> but like, like you said, it really depends on your skin. Because I think we've interviewed people where they can do it like the day of the class and they're okay. And they're fine, yeah. Yeah. So really just be mindful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Another tip I have and it's, um, from, our face, from the Facebook chat as well is to not compare yourself to other dancers or others in the class with you and others on Instagram. Just don't compare yourself to others. Um, we all have our own pole journeys and we all have different body types, backgrounds. Um, yeah, well, well, that's what I do have to say. At that. No, that's, that's a really good one. Yeah, the comparison is so hard, but we are all our own dancer and we're all here to express our own movements. And if we don't discover our own movements, then how will we all grow? <laughs> yes. I will say if you have to compare yourself to anyone, compare yourself to your older videos. You should always be recording your journey. That's how you improve so you can see where your math steps are and you can track how your progress is. But you should be comparing yourself to how you were in the beginning and it will work wonders because you're not the same dancer that you were when you first started. So if you have to, because human nature, we always got to compare ourselves to time. So if you have to, just to compare yourself to yourself back in the day. Yes. <laughs> That's so perfect, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, and our next tip, I think, is coming from you. Yes. I have another one um, about skin. <laughs> and this one is, let's say you've put too much grip on or you're trying a new grip and it didn't work out or you were you have a bunch of different grips on and now it's like a concoction of terribleness. You can use Dawn dish soap to get all of the stuff off of yourself. So we keep um, some Dawn dish soap in our bathroom here at the studio, just in case. And that's happened to me several times where I've been trying out a new grip and I'll put it on myself and then I'll start to pull and I'll realize it's not working, try a different grip. And now I've got like this um, science project on my body <laughs> that's not, not working out. And you just take some Dawn soap and just wash yourself off and you'll be clean and new again. All of the residue should be free and you can start over and that is a yes. good tip and if you <laughs> and if you can't afford the dawn soap the palm olive or uh, yes. from yeah yeah any of those off. that takes the grease off. <laughs> <laughs> i do like the dawn soap but here at home we use the palm olive <laughs> yes <laughs> love it um that is a great skin tip so many skin tips for sure uh, my next tip is more into awareness and it's spatial awareness. And the tip is to be mindful of your spacing when you're in class, especially like if it's a sexy flow class, like you don't want to heal the eye or if it's like a trick class, you don't want to get kicked during an invert 
or kick someone else. Um, and as instructors, I mean, we'll probably go over this in another episode, but as instructors, be mindful of your students' spatial awareness. I know I had to learn this a couple weeks back. Um, it does play a fact. Students will say they don't want to return or things like that. So just be mindful if as a student and as an instructor of spatial awareness in the pole class. Right, when you got those heels on, your legs are like an extra eight inches long. <laughs> yeah, and there's been several times where it's been quite dangerous. You know, everyone's doing fan kicks and like mm -hmm. you're standing in the middle of those fan kicks. <laughs> there's nowhere to go. I know, or you're walking by and someone's in the middle of a cat spin and you didn't even freaking realize it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or there's been several times when like, I'll be like, I don't know I have to psych myself up to do like a shoulder mount so I'll be like standing there standing there and I'll be like okay deep breath in exhale and as I start to lift someone walks by <laughs> <laughs> too funny it does happen yeah yeah well, spatial awareness that is your next tip students and teachers <laughs> yes or like standing in front of people's videos too I'll do that a lot mm, yes. <laughs> I will accidentally do it as I walk in the class <laughs> like whoops sorry but yeah that's a good one to just good pull tip uh, my my next pull tip again is back to scan and grip aids um and this one is don't be ashamed to use grip aids they're there for you as a tool and it doesn't mean that you're a bad pole dancer it just means that you need a grip aid and there's all sorts of different grip aids um we have a whole episode about them um, but I, I feel like sometimes, you know, students feel like they can't wear like the hand grips, like you should build up your grip strength, which is totally true. But I've seen some students that like literally rip up their hands every single time they touch the pole just because their skin is so sensitive. So this is not something that you should have to like go through every time you pull dance. You shouldn't leave here bloody and bruised all the time. So definitely don't be ashamed of using grip aids. Um, the sticky clothes, sticky um, hand and body grips. There's so many tools to make you um, have a better time pole dancing. <laughs> Makes me want to do a bigger updated episode in season two. <laughs> yeah, right. Because it came up the other day in, in class. Someone was like, oh, how do you guys feel about, you know, wearing the gloves? And I was like, get them. Like, please get them. Feel what it feels like to, to actually hold on to the pole rather than just struggling yep. the whole time. Yeah. Or even like yoga socks, like I, no matter how much yeah. grip I put in my feet, I cannot do a foot mount or a reiku at all, but put on a nice pair of grip yoga socks and forget about it. Yeah, and then <laughs> it's, it's so empowering to have those tools and you can like do the thing rather than being like, ah, foot mounts aren't for me. Uh. <laughs> Yeah. All righty, our next tip is, I just had it. Oh yes, this is, um, I guess it's important for students, but also important for instructors when you walk into a class to give your pole a shake, um, especially if they're not mounted <laughs> and it's a pressure pole, give it just a little shake um, to protect yourself beforehand. Um, shit happens. Um, you don't know what happened in the class before you. Um, you want to prepare your students and yourself for what's about to go under. So a nice little shake. Make sure it doesn't come out of place or it doesn't come undone for some reason. Um, things happen. Winter happens. Metal and wood separate. All that crazy science shit. <laughs> so be mindful of that, especially if your poles are not mounted, because um, I do know some studios don't have mounted poles. Right, like that's the first thing I do when I walk in, is I literally like fling myself onto these poles and shake them all around. Because <laughs> <laughs> if anything is gonna happen, I want it to happen, you know, before all the students come, before everyone comes in. Uh, yeah, because so you never know, like like you said, the change of the weather, if you've got wood going on, the wood likes to breathe and move around. Yeah, mm -hmm. and especially if they're not like fully mounted into the ceiling and the floor. 
Yes, love the tip. <laughs> <laughs> this one um, is from a fellow um, owner and instructor, and they said that sometimes new students don't understand how to engage their core, which forces them to overcompensate using their arms or other body parts. Um, and I also have found this to be true that um, it's hard to understand how to engage your core, especially since it's like all encompassing of this area. Um, and I like to, to think of it as in regions. We've got our side abs, our low abs, middle abs, upper abs. We've got our twisty abs, bendy abs. <laughs> but thinking about like um, different ways that you can personally feel your abdominals engaging. Um, so that's just being more mindful of your own personal body and asking yourself if you are feeling these muscles being engaged or are you just holding on for dear life with your arms? Um, and that might too come, come with time, but it is true for, for a lot of new students. It's hard to understand how much uh, a role your core plays in a lot of things in pole dance. Uh, I agree with that, which brings us into a second tip to piggyback off of that, to remember to engage all your muscles. Um, it's just not about building your upper body strength. Like Mandy said, you wanna engage your core. So an example of um, one is your basic pole climb. When a lot of students are learning it, they don't realize how much leg um, engagement is involved. It's not just holding yourself with your arms, it's those ankles, it's those knees, et cetera, et cetera. And when they finally learn that, it makes a huge difference with their pole climb. Um, so I love that you brought up the core. Um, remember to engage all those muscles. Um, another example is the pointed toe and the flex foot. When you're like an outside leg hook, that pointed toe will make a difference on if you're gonna stay or if you're gonna fall along with the hip rotation, but that's different. Not only is the pointed toe aesthetically pleasing, but it does help the muscles work a different way to help keep you locked in better. All sorts of cool, fun tidbits that you don't think about. <laughs> so engage those muscles. It's not just an arm workout, y'all. It's a whole body experience, pretty much. Yes, right. You definitely have to like think about what's going on. And I mean, for for my personal body, I'm very hypermobile. So I'm constantly asking my body, do I feel this in the place where it's supposed to be felt? Because my body is very good at finding compensations and it just takes the easy way out the whole time. So if I don't pay attention to that, I come up with all like imbalances in my body and and I had an injury because of it at one point too, because I wasn't mindful. Um, your arms come from your back. <laughs> That's my my motto, my my number one tip. <laughs> your arms come from your back. That's a good tip. So <laughs> your lats and your scapulas and deltoids and all of it. Right, like especially like when your arms are out to the side, like if they start to get tired, think about them anchored from your back and then they like become lighter. They just become lighter. And then you're like, Oh, all of my arm control is coming from my back here. It's not just coming from my shoulder or my chest. Um, Even when like I found when you're in a pole spin or like a, a split grip or full bracket grip, when you tell yourself arms are from the back and engage that lat and that scapula and all that, it feels much different. Yeah, um, especially in spins. I never realized how much I was fucking losing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It always it makes me wonder too because you know you and I are, have you know very mobile joints, <laughs> but I feel like for polars who don't have mobile joints like that are as mobile as ours, they their bodies just automatically the back muscles understand to work. But for people like us, we have to just remind our arms that they come from our back. And I, my new one too, is I have to remind my lap that it needs to stay in its home. <laughs> because when I lift my shoulder, my whole lat and everything comes out, but lat should stay, shoulder should lift. <laughs> These are tips for my own body. 
maybe they're helpful for you. I don't know. <laughs> Good. I mean, a shoulder engagement is helpful for anyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's really confusing about the shoulder too, because especially if you don't know too much about like anatomy and like what makes your shoulders do all of these things. Because there's so many ways we can move our shoulders. Um, but learning about the muscles and the way that they move your body is, is very helpful. Yeah. Um, the Poe PT Physio book is amazing. Yes. <laughs> so good. And it offers yeah. like, like um, ways you can feel the engagement of the muscles, like exercises to help out too. Definitely recommend yes. that book. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do I have it? They are not a sponsor of us yet, but one day maybe. <laughs> no, this is their new one, Pole Anatomy. Yes, <laughs> Love this amazing. book, Pole Anatomy. It's so good. Um, here's the inside. And then mm -hmm. the Pole PT book. Where is it? <laughs> Strength and conditioning. Yeah, this one changed my life. So if you, this is a great yes. pull tip. These two books here from Pole PT. Again, we are not sponsored by them. We're not getting paid for this yet. <laughs> <laughs> but so appreciate um, the time they took they to make these incredible resources. Tools. Yeah. Yeah. Those are amazing tools. <laughs> All right. I think you got the next tip, or do I have the next tip? There's so many um, tips. <laughs> right? Like, I can go, you can go. I'm ready. You can go. <laughs> <laughs> a tip um, that I definitely took advantage of this year was get the professional photos. Get them. Even if you are a beginner polar yeah. and you don't think that you know. Yeah. Even if you don't think that you are worthy of a photo shoot yet, you should still get the professional photos because it's going to document your pull journey. Um, it will document, you know, the, the cool outfit that you had, the cool shoes that you had. Um, you know, it'll just bring back so many wonderful memories of you in that time and pole dancing. <laughs> and it's fun, yeah. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, definitely get the professional photos every single time. Yeah, if you can afford it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. They are quite pricey, <laughs> but worth it. <laughs> You're too funny. The next tip um, is. A very good one that many people don't think of. Don't eat a, such a large meal before you pull. Especially, I mean, I guess maybe you can get away with it in an intro class, but if you plan on going upside down, you should not be eating a large meal at least two, three hours before you go. It will not be pleasant. It will be, I'm not saying you're going to throw up, but it will be very uncomfortable. Um, your stomach will, ugh. Yeah, and then ab workouts, you'll be tooting up a lot, which is okay, because farts are okay in pole. <laughs> yeah, you should normalize farts, back farts and real farts. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but save yourself the discomfort and don't eat such a large meal. I, some people think this is self-explanatory, but I mean, we are all busy. Sometimes we're just on the go, 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 and we don't think about it, but be mindful of it. Yeah, yeah, there was definitely one time where I didn't plan my meals during the day. And I ate a big meal right before I taught two classes and I somehow made it through those two classes. But literally the moment everyone left, I was so nauseous. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, can never do that again. Never do it again. So yeah, eating a small snack before class or in between classes is good. Um, but never like a big gigantic meal. Ah, no lasagna <laughs> or large big back meal. <laughs> yes. Save it for after. <laughs> oh yeah. You need to replenish those, that energy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. The next one is um be mindful of getting sunburned before you take pole class. Um or like go tanning. Um sometimes your skin um will you know, be very, very sensitive after you've been in the sun. So it might ruin your pole practice mm -hmm. for weeks, <laughs> um, depending on how bad you've got that sunburn. So just be mindful, of, you know, how you treat your skin. You almost have to like, you know, have a little skin regimen for yourself. Um, if you do like to go tanning, you got to really think about um, your tanning schedule, I guess. I don't go tanning. Even in so. the 
<laughs> Even in the summer, I got like a little sun, not like a crazy sunburn, but I could feel it in my thighs and you definitely feel it. It's like pole burn yep. friction with like an added sunburn and you're like whoa this is a new sensation yeah it's not fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah it it'll sneak up on you it like if will. your shins were burned there's no climbing in your future no basic climb no climbing <laughs> <laughs> that's when you have to do your one arm hand over hand climb oh your circus gemini climb i don't think you <laughs> there. Hmm, maybe all righty what other pole tips can we give you i say normalize pole dancing by talk about talking about it um i mean obviously be safe and stuff but don't be afraid to talk to your friends or even family i understand certain like groups maybe religious won't be understanding and accepting i'm sorry about that but you can do your part in normalizing this form of fitness um because it does change lives um you shouldn't feel embarrassed or awkward to bring it up because you're doing amazing stuff and changing your life and just freaking dancing <laughs> sorry i couldn't unmute <laughs> no i was gonna say um I'm so happy you brought that up because um, the more we show our authentic selves to the world, we'll make others, you know, feel more comfortable being their authentic selves. And, and really it's the people that don't understand pole dancing. They're not really ready um, to even be themselves because they've probably got some sort of, you know, um, ideas that they're holding on to. But if you continue being your amazing self, and they love you. Um, hopefully one day they'll come around, you know. Um, but it's it's hard too, because you sometimes have to to make that decision and know that when you talk to your friend or your relative or people you're close to about your pole dancing, that it can go either way. They could either be very curious and loving, or they could um, you know, start sexualizing you right away or you know, belittle you because of whatever notions they have. Um, so yeah, I hate saying like, it's kind of a responsibility for us pole dancers to, um, to educate, but you know, and we're always, you, you don't have to be in the mood to educate all the time, but know that it is, um, especially as pole fitness dancers as well, to kind of help, you know, erase the stigma of, of sex work as well, you know, it would be really helpful <laughs> for us to be those educators. Um, Cause if we can help change the world in just a little way, you know, at least try um, to show the world how, how wonderful poll is and how it's changed lives. That's more important um, sometimes than friendships, I guess. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> don't like, don't stop. Um, just because of other people. I think that's another important yeah. thing. Don't stop. Um, we've had a few students stop because um, I'm just thinking back of the like, last year and a half or so. And we've had a few stop because once they got really into it, they were sharing posts and stuff and their family or friends or even work wasn't happy about it. Um, and I understand why they stopped. But I'm begging you not to stop. You only get one chance on this world that we know of. Why stop doing something that makes you happy? Um, just because others don't understand it, it really, it sucks. And I hope those students find pole dancing again. And I hope other students who go through it come back to it. Just don't stop. You may lose friends family members for the time being like my mom stopped talking to me for a bit i mean i was getting into stripping but even when i transferred from stripping to pole instruction she didn't quite understand it um but now she gets it we talk about it it's obviously changed my life as y'all can see um so 
just don't stop. <laughs> right. There was another uh, student that it was really sad because she almost quit because um, the people in her community, um, you know, the, she was mentioning they saw her, you know, before pole dance and she was, you know, struggling and had all these health issues. And then she started pole dancing, didn't say anything to her community. And they saw like this change in her. And then they were asking her what, what was going on. And then she revealed to them what it was. It was pole dancing. And then they immediately like, didn't even care that it had made her life better. It was just like pole dancing. And, and they started making her feel bad for her, for her choice to pole dance, even though it was helping her. And it was really sad to hear that story. So and, and I'm sorry that people have to go through that. Um, and it, it is a hard thing to educate people and to, to find out that your loved ones and family members and friends don't appreciate what you do. But um, there are people who do appreciate what you do. And, um, you know, just try to focus on, on those, you know, doing what, what you love and feeling good about it and, and honestly, hopefully those people will come around eventually. Um, or if they yes. don't, maybe you sparked something in them um, for the future, at least, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. It is. The best tip we can give you for that is just don't stop. Just, yeah. it is not going to be easy, especially when you have people against you. But don't stop doing what you love for anybody else. Yeah. And then that leads to another tip um, is to like, no matter how skilled you are at pole dance, you will have a bad day. <laughs> you will have a bad week. You will have a bad month. Um, please try not to be so hard on yourself. Um, everyone's got to start somewhere. Everyone is, you know, when you learn a new trick, you know, you're, it's not expected to be amazing the first time you do it. You know, give yourself some leeway and, and be more patient with yourself. Um, another, which leads me into a tip I can piggyback, always continue your education, whether you're an instructor or a student or a studio owner, take classes from other people, other studios. Um, even if you feel like you're not going to learn anything, I think that's bullshit. I think you can always learn something from taking another class or another teacher. Um, it really does help continue to grow your education, learn different ways. Even if you didn't enjoy the class, you did it. Um, you supported someone else, you went out and you tried and you should always continue to do that. Um, oftentimes we feel like, oh, I'm a teacher, come to my class, come to my class, or we get so busy and we can't take the time, whatever story. But um it really does make a difference if, with continuing your education and experiencing pole dance and different aspects and uniqueness <laughs> right like even um even if like let's say you're a teacher that knows everything right like like let's say you know everything and you're just like you take someone else's class um there was one instance where I, I saw somebody wrote like they went to another teacher's class and they didn't learn anything they said and they were so frustrated and upset with the teacher um, because they didn't personally learn anything. And I and I read that and I and I thought about how I'd feel on both sides of this situation. And like I'm not gonna ever say that I know everything, but if I go to a class and I didn't personally learn anything, I feel like that would be my fault because I was not leaving myself open to learning something in that class. Like, even if I knew everything that the teacher was giving, I think that it is, you know, maybe now it's a time to see how the class dynamic is and maybe learn from some of the students that are in the class, like maybe their movements or, you know, I don't know, just be a little bit more open, like you said, to, to never stop learning. Um, or even because, ask a question like, I, I, this is easy for me. How can I make it harder? like yeah. have that engagement with your instructor. Yes, yeah, because sometimes the teacher doesn't even know that, you know, you're not having a good time and, and you uh, can't leave that on them. You can't give them that responsibility to make you happy. You have yeah. to like reach out and be like, hey, is there a progression for this? Like, can you give me another fact. way out of this? <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. To us, we just think you're killing it. We don't know that you want something more. (laughs) That's the thing. Like, I'm going to be like, wow, this is awesome. Like, and, you know, it depends on everyone else in the class, too. Like, I'm not going to stop the whole class and and give you extra things unless, you know, you've asked me that. (laughs) Yeah. Always be a student. Yeah. Always, always, always. Uh, I think that was my tip. Is it your tip? I know. I was like, I think that's all. Of, <laughs> that was all like really the tips that I had um, for pole dancers. Stay hydrated. Um, um. <laughs> stay hydrated constantly. Um, sometimes muscle soreness is because you're not drinking enough water for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's another? I had one. It was just from the fucking tip of my tongue. <laughs> uh, body awareness. Always, always be learning about your body. Um, when you take a class and they teach you a new trick, um, I think we mentioned this earlier, breathe and take your time during the trick. Learn what's working for your body. Learn what your body parts is doing. Um, and you'll be surprised. Save your body so much hassle. Don't rush into it. Be aware. <laughs> I'm telling you, please be aware. Save yourself some pain. Um, and you really, you'll find you'll learn so much about your body, about different things you can't do, different things you can do, different things you have to work on. Um, Because it's cool to be able to do a bunch of tricks, yeah, yeah, rush through it. But it's beautiful and awesome to have that body awareness, be able to take your time at each trick, enjoy it, and properly do it without hurting yourself. Um, and I feel... As an audience, you can see that. You see when they have that body awareness, they know what they're doing and they're not just rushing through it um, just to get it done. So be mindful, learn about your body. Yes, that reminds me of, um, we used to call them like trick collectors where you would just like learn the trick and never do it again. Mm -hmm. But but that's never mastering anything. That's just collecting tricks. And I, I mean, there's a place for that too, I guess. But if you really want to like, you know, grow in, in this art and, and your body and learn how, how to be more efficient and everything too, it's mm-hmm. best to like do everything over and over again. And, and while you're in the trick, like, think about it, like, yeah. oh, is my shoulder up into my ear? Like, am I breathing? Yeah. <laughs> How can, can I, I get out of this muscle? differently? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, what's a cool new entry or different things? I was a trick collector when I started, and that's how I got into so many injuries that I could have easily prevented. Um, yeah. I mean, and I, it's because I learned in the strip club, so it was expected. Yeah, right. Um, like That's the way it goes. You just do the same thing over and over again on the same side. Oh, that's yeah. another tip. Do both sides. <laughs> yes. Even if just at least once, if you can't do that that not favorite side multiple times, just try it at least once. And with time, you'll be able to do it twice or three times. Oh. But if you don't even do it at all, you're not gonna that's no conditioning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you'll you'll I mean, just this past year when when you and I have been really focusing on doing both sides, I've noticed my body has felt much better. I feel more balanced mm-hmm. and I have more confidence. Like when randomly in class, I realize that I have to do it on my silly side. <laughs> yeah. And it's practicing what you preach. Like mm-hmm. students want to see that you also have issues <laughs> with certain sides. They like to see that it shows you're human and you're just like them, to be quite honest. Yes. Um, and it helps prevent injuries. It truly does. Um, you will have muscle imbalances. So just practice it at least once and then build your way to twice and then three times. And then how it might even become your favorite size. Yeah, right? Like you never know. <laughs> like I now have pole tricks that I hated doing on my least favorite side. And now I rather do them on my least favorite side. It's just interesting. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I'll give this a break for a little while since I've been doing my right side jade for years. Let me give left side jade a, some spotlight time. <laughs> 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 but I guess I just thought of another um, 
the pole tip for, for students and pole dancers is cross training. And it's something that is not really talked about, but if you do want to progress, it is a good idea to think about adding cross training into your practice. Yes. Um, even if you're competing, I mean, if you're doing like level one and two, it's not as important, but if you really want to like <laughs> show progress, make a statement, show you're serious level three, level four, especially pro, like you should be doing cross training. Um, yeah. It really does make a difference. I'm so thankful. Paulina used to tell us all the fucking time. Yeah. And it wasn't until, like, Jamie would pull into life coach where she, like, made me fucking do it that I truly could understand and see the benefits. Yeah. Um, thank you, Paulina and Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, oh. It really does truly make a difference. I'm so thankful I learned it. Yes. Yeah, and I guess uh, uh, a tip that we should all remind ourselves is to take breaks. And that is a hard one because um, we love it so much and we want to get better. We want to get better now. Um, but our bodies need time to rest, especially if we have a lot of like external stress stuff going on in our lives. If we keep like, you know, pushing aside that external stress instead of dealing with it. Um, that could snowball into your practice as well. So really taking some time dealing with stuff and then, you know, working through your body is also important, but, but pushing yourself through things is not good. So listening to your body, taking breaks, um, even planning the breaks into your practice, um, which was what I have to do um, <laughs> is, is important. Oh, another fun tip, which is random. Pole dance with friends or loved ones or coworkers. <laughs> Bring other pe people into it or even make your time more enjoyable. Maybe yes. you're tired of going to class with people you don't know. Have a pole party. Yes. <laughs> uh, um, or something like that. It really, I don't know how to explain it. It really does change the environment when you're pole dancing with people that you like know. It's not just other students. I really don't know how to explain it. You have to kind of experience it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Like even too, like if you have a bunch of friends who aren't pole dancers and you've been doing it for a while and they like want to try, it's really fun to have mm -hmm. a pole party with them because then you kind of get to show off and then they get to experience what you've been posting about the whole time. And then yeah. maybe you will spark something in them too. Yeah, and it, if anything, hopefully make y'all closer. Yes. <laughs> Find another new love. Um, <laughs> and even like I family love... members too. We had a um, full party with one of my um, my in-laws and they all came yeah. in and they were like, you know, all different ages and they all had their different ailments that they were talking about before class. And then, but by the end of class, they were all like swinging around the pool, having a grand old time, all ages um, yeah. and all, you know, like people who never would have thought that they would do it. So, yeah, spread yes, that word. I love when whole students lot. bring their friends. We have a lot of students that bring their friends and they like keep coming. I'm like, I love this. It's like, yes. It's, it's pretty nice. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Um, any other tips? Sign up to be interviewed for Poe on the Con. Share your story. <laughs> yes. For real. I was just about to say that. Share your story because. Like I said earlier, if you show your authentic self, like it might seem like, you know, it's just you, but your story is going to, going to reach, you know, at least one person and there, you might change their life. You might convince them to like, take a leap. <laughs> and that's huge. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to cry now. because like, <laughs> it's all the time here. And it's so, it's such a beautiful thing. And I think that's, you know. I appreciate pole dancing so much because it really brings a lot of people yeah. together. It pushes people away sometimes, but it does bring people together. <laughs> it does. Um, it, you never know when you being honest about yourself can like change someone else's life. <laughs> For real, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's been so many times where like I've just, you know, shared something that was so small to me that later someone had come up and been like, you know, that what you did or said, it was, you know, the thing. And it's just like, uh, wow, I, I'm so glad that I put myself out there like that rather than keeping that inside. 
Yeah. Yeah. And your story deserves to be shared for sure. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Any other tips? I'm sure there's like countless tips and we're just like rambling on because we went through our list and we went through what was in our head. (laughs) (laughs) Right? Like I'm sure there's so many more. And right after we finish this episode, I'm going to be like, ah! That's why we're that's why we're coming up with another one um, that will probably be in season two, yes. which will go into more details in our next episode. Yeah. Um, yes. So many tips. Thank you to everyone who submitted their tips in the Facebook group. Yeah. Um, yeah. And these were just like poll dancer tips. We're planning on having another episode for poll teacher tips, poll studio tips. Um yeah, and maybe like photo shoot tips and stuff like that too. Lots of tips yeah. coming your way. <laughs> so many hacks. <laughs> too funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, next week's episode will be a recap and a preview of what's to come. Um, we are going to give y'all, I know we're going to give y'all like if we're in charge or something. <laughs> We are going to do like a two month break, November, December. Hopefully it will allow all of y'all to catch up or even share this and get other people interested. And during those two months, we're going to be interviewing a bunch of people. We are going to be creating a lot. Well, we'll go more into details, but yes, know that a break is coming up November, December for the end of season one (laughs) and season two will be starting in January. Yes. I can't believe it. 40 episodes. I feel like, oh my goodness, we need to get like a Roku channel app or something. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, wow, that's so many episodes. But like, honestly, like it's been so much fun and I've learned so much. I hope that everyone else appreciates um, these episodes just as much as I have appreciated them. Um, It's just been such a joy to to hear everyone's stories. And like I said, to learn from everyone um, and to share our knowledge too, because, you know, we're a little, little studio in Springfield. (laughs) Yeah. It's just such a joy to grow too, because I know we have made quite a bit of mistakes this first year, but y'all have been quick to let us know. (laughs) <laughs> and we appreciate you for that. Um, we can't wait to bring you an incredible second season for sure. Yes. And hopefully <laughs> we'll meet. That next, next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So definitely if you want us to interview you and you can be a newbie puller, you can be the most famous puller in the world. Um, you, If you have a poll story, um, let's hear it. We'll share it. Yes. Um, and also our Monday Monday Motivation post. Um, so it's a little less um, sharing your story, but you can send us a poll photo of yourself and an inspirational quote, and we'll post to you on Mondays. And it's been really beautiful to share everyone's motivational quotes and, and beautiful pictures. Um, it really makes my day when I see them. So hopefully it'll, yeah. it makes your day too. <laughs> and to the listeners and viewers from across the world, because y'all be reaching out to us too, we want to interview you too. I know time zone maybe. Um, affect certain things but we will make it work if we have to stay up late or (laughs) or wake up early (laughs) we want to interview you because we truly appreciate you listening from overseas and we see and hear y'all um always so thankful for all of y'all but we want to interview all of you around the world and we want you to know that (laughs) yes (laughs) i love it yeah i guess well thank you so much for listening to this episode and for for providing some of the poll tips as well because we asked on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. That is our episode for the day. Poll tips for poll dancer. Thank you all so much for signing in. I can't wait for our last episode of the season. Recap and sneak peek. We have a few sneak peeks for you. We're so excited for season two. Um, yes. But let's sign off of this. Yeah. Right. My name is we're, we are Po on the call. We are ending our episode today. My name is Chris Rivers. And I'm Mandy Mack. Yes. And we are signing <laughs> off with our heels. Oh my goodness. And my yoga pants. Ooh. I know. I'm in this kneeling chair, so I, I can't lift my other foot. <laughs> Too funny. I can't believe I got the shoe on with a sock on. I need more heels. <laughs> <laughs>